So um, I am secretly obsessed because I like to, we just had the conversation. How do, Deontay just spoke on, how are we going to get a little bit more personal? Because as we know, there are millions of real estate agents in this world, millions of real estate, I got four in my neighborhood alone of 150 homes. How am I going to fight that battle? Um, what are we doing differently in our walk, in our in our business that stands out from the rest? Do we sell houses differently? Do we, do we help them buy houses differently? Surely we don't. But what are the personal touches and the things? Because I'm a Buffini girl. They will rem they will not remember what I did, but they will remember how I made them feel. So I had the pleasure of speak hearing Will Goodero speak um, a couple weeks ago when I was in Miami, and his book is based on unreasonable hospitality, and I have been doing the audible version of it. So I'm about chapter four in, and I'm hooked because he's really relating it to real life things that people truly things happen to you and you're just like, wow, this is crazy. Like I shared with most of you, my um, client uh, attempted suicide a couple weeks ago and her house is on the market. So my job was to go over and clean the house from top to bottom. So if any showings came through, anything of that nature, or anything happened, the house was ready to go. But I did want her to understand that I am not here to invade her privacy. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to distress her out any further, but I'm here to help. And I want to make sure she's okay. So it's like, how do we follow through? And one of the things he said was um, the Chewy company that brings dog food. And you may love this, Kelly, because you work with animals. So, you know, with the animal thing so much. He says, when people learn, when Chewy learns that you have lost an animal, they immediately send you a sorry for your loss gift. Immediately. Yeah. It's so in flowers. It is in flowers. The most unexpected and delightful thing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's so good. That's so good. And it's like, are we listening or really taking note of the people that we're working with on um on a daily basis? Like I said, we're with people from six, nine months, years. I had a girl in my in my system for three years. And she finally bought. Finally bought. And then in in the in the process. Some of the things that stood out to me were certain things that she really wanted and she would do in her house. So I that was part of her welcome basket for me. I still did the monogram. Um, so I, I pulled out a couple of my things, my foolishness. So the monogram cutting boards, I do not have any of the uh, mats here, but the monogram cutting board, having her name on it, established the year she bought it, and then following up with my logo on the back. People usually use that as um, a show place, a showpiece. It sits in their catch kitchen on pedestals. They don't cut on it, they don't use it. My family, I gave everyone in my family one, every household, and they were like, they they aren't, they think they're the best thing since sliced bread. Um, Etsy, I had a girl here doing, she doesn't do them anymore, so now Etsy is my go-to for the boards and the mats. Um, when I do listing presentations, um, things I include Clorox wipes, um, magic erasers, little little notes to say, hey, this is a good way to clean around the house. And I tell them, hey, some of the things that I do around my own house, these are some of the products I use. And these are some of the things, hey, you should look at the, the light switches, fingerprints and things and little markets. You want to wipe, wipe around those. That's something people, you know, take notice of. Little small stuff like that. Um Every time I meet a buyer, I have a bag. I don't care what's in that bag. I don't care if I fill it with shrink paper. Um, lately, I've been doing this, and then I have my team logo printed out, once again, Etsy. And I just slap it on any type of bag. It could be this bag with the window, or it could be the bigger ones. And I can get these from Target. There's no issue to get them from Target. Nobody cares. No one literally cares. It's a brown paper bag. They think it's the cutest thing ever. And I fill it up with a little um, crinkle paper. This one thing I've been putting in them lately is the lattes because it's cold. Y'all seen my apple cider um, setups with the apple cider and the cinnamon stick and the little caramel cubes. That's another thing. Um, personal touches. When I go to closing, personal notes, they're so big. 
And when I go to listing presentations inside of the package, I also put a personal note. You want to record this? Yes, ma'am. You wanted to record this? Or is that your otter just asking? Oh, her otter probably wants to join. It's the auto asking because I'm sitting over here enthralled. <laughs> yeah, so personal notes. I usually include them in my listing presentation. I have all different types. There's a whole basket of them with different um, things on top because I just never got around to using them every every single day. But whenever I go to listing presentations, I put them inside and I say, you know, thank you for the opportunity. And of course, we list before we um, list to win before whatever, however the saying goes. And we show up there with our all of our stuff. Um, I know Krista advised at one point, one of the things, once we win a listing presentation, um, there was a little bouquet that I would send from um, Edible Arrangements. It was like 25 bucks. Once I won a, uh, a listing presentation, I would send it over to them and I would say, thank you for trusting me with your um, selling of your house. You know, and it was just a nice follow-up that people just remembered. And um, the name being embedded on a piece of something um, one client told me, she said, oh, I know it was you because you actually took the time to do our name on it. And then I had a couple who had a hyphenated last name um, and they, they they refer to each other that way. So I kept saying, I said, um, which name do you go go by? She was like, oh, no, that's, that's it's, it. it's hyphenated. So when her son saw the mat, he was like, oh, mom, it's both names. Like, I didn't take the time to cut one off you know, just, and it just, it's just been a, a thing. It's just been a thing for me personally. So the intent of this mastermind was for us to get together and just share some of the tips and tricks and things that we do to that personal touch. That's just to remind people that we're here and we actually are listening and care about them to this extent. I think that's, that's one of the things that a lot of people had just, you know, we just roll on past because the first thing I heard in real estate was, when I first came into it, didn't know anything about it, fresh out of the federal government. I just didn't know. I knew I loved houses. That's what, that, I can tell you that much. I can tell you nothing else. Um, the first thing I heard in the Buffini session was people don't remember their real estate agents. They could have had an amazing experience. Everything could have went smoothly. But then they come back and they say, would you use them again? Yes, I'd use them again if I could figure out where they were. What are we doing to stay in touch and to... You know, go back and say, hey, I'm still here. Um, I did purchase um, some templates, about 18 templates from uh, Amanda Albrecht, and I put it in the Skinning to Win group. I need to see if I put it in the early morning crew, uh, Mary Ellen, because um, on those templates, it's little cards, little postcards, and I have cardstock paper here and envelopes. And this month, I'll be sending out um, the different measurements that are needed at Thanksgiving. I love that idea when you talked about it the uh, other day. Yeah, all the breakdowns. So that'll be my mail out before Thanksgiving dinner. Because you got a lot of people that just moved into their house. They want to cook that first dinner. They probably can't cook, but yeah. <laughs> but I have got some templates very similar, except mm -hmm. it's the transaction itself. Mm -hmm. it's a different phase. It's earnest money's received. And it's both for the buyer and the seller. And then I just keep it in Canva. So I personalize it like I had... This last year, I had clients that were in Japan, they were in Austria, and I used those to keep them in touch with what was going on with the transaction. And they really like it because it is personalized. Um, and I just think when you go through the transaction, you have to really pay attention to who your clients are. You know, um, are both the parents working? You know, are they small business owners? Do they have small children? is the small children's special needs. I had one that I met at an open house and their child was special, was actually a genius. And so we really had to take time to figure out um, what school district they wanted to be in and so forth. Well, now when it's coming to Christmas time, you know, one of the things that I used to do with my kids and they were all math geniuses was if you gave them anything and usually it was a gift card, we put it in one of those plastic puzzle boxes. And now as adults, they still want those puzzle boxes mm -hmm. because and it wasn't just a gift card. So I'm incorporating that into my clients that have children between the ages of like eight and 15, you know, give them a small gift. But then like I have one couple that has five kids. I'm going to give them five puzzle boxes with a gift card. You know, something different. 
pay attention to your client. If I know my clients just had a baby, I normally will send them Omaha Steaks prepared meals and they get like, it's a box and they get like maybe four prepared meals that they can make on themselves. But after you have a baby and they come home, obviously that's the last thing why they feel like doing is cooking or even going out or even having something delivered sometimes. So that has had a big impact. So, and, and I think you're right, Lisa, is they always remember, you give them a good experience. I think the most agents, especially being in this program, we give the experience. We have no problem with giving the experience. But the problem is after the fact. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time and I have a big portion of my business that comes from referrals. My attorneys, my financial planners, but you get to know them. So, you know, the dog people, the cat people, the cat people that aren't the dog people, <laughs> you know, there's a difference and they all think differently. But I think it's just going that extra mile if somebody needs something. Um, this year, I had about three different families that this was their first year during hurricane season. And we in my area, it was anticipated that we were going to have one go right over the top of us. So I made a point to call all of them and say, hey, welcome to your first hurricane season. And I did it, you know, when everybody started to prepare, I'm like, these are the things you need to do, you know? Um, and, and I think that goes a long way because it's not just the transaction. You've already completed the transaction. It's like, hey, it's three months, four months later. Like, hey, I was thinking about you. I'm really, I realized, remember this was your first hurricane season. I put up four different sets of shutters this year. And then mine. <laughs> because people needed the help. I'm like, hey, you want me to come over and help you? Some of them, they were out of the area. So you you know, you know, call them ahead of time, say, hey, do you mind if I put your shutters up? Do you have to do that? No, but is that going to go a long way for somebody? Absolutely, especially after the fact. So. I usually do a call um, after they moved in, probably about three to four days after they've moved in and just could check and make sure everything's working. Nothing's crazy that they don't understand or you okay. Everything all right over there. That's the first thing I do. Um, every holiday, every uh, Christmas, um, all of my buyers and sellers that are in the area, if you're out of area, I, I usually can't do anything about it. Um, but I do something personalized. So every year it's a different type of gift that goes along with Christmas. Um, one year we did uh, cocoa bombs. Um, we had a local bakery here. So I got to use a business here and we um, did cocoa bombs for everyone and we dropped them off at their houses. Um, for my children, because um, kids are my, my heart, um, for the kids, I have a client who bakes cookies. That's her business. She bakes cookies. So she makes me cookie jars every year. And um, then I order so many dozens of cookies and we put them in tins and we de deliver them to all of the children. And we say, these are your Santa cookies. And the mm -hmm. kids leave them out. And they, they're like, oh, we got our Santa cookies. Like, we're good. Like, we got to get them set out. So I'm usually running around on Christmas Eve delivering these cookies to the kids. And then the ones that get the cookie jars, they're a little older. So I always get the videos from the parents of them making their cookies um, together to prepare for Santa. But if they're smaller, we just usually do the, the tens. So it helps that local business, my client who is a cookie maker, um, it helps her. And then it also, we get to touch our children because I have a ton of families with kids. Once again, back to Yasmin's point, these, this is my niche. I am more attracted to uh, the move up buyer who is looking for the higher price point home. Um, their kids play soccer on the weekends. Mom does brunch and fancy bags. That's all my bag. I'm, I'm right there in it. That's my life. I love children. Everybody who knows me knows I, me and my kids, we love kids. So people want to come hang out at our house. I have no toys in my house. I have nothing in my house that you can actually play with. But kids just want to come over there. So it's a thing. So it's it's part of my business. So um, for those of you who have known me over a year, you know, we do an Easter egg hunt every year. We do the fall harvest. We did not do that year, this year because I was just traveling too much, but it's all part of the thing. And now I just found out that Moana 2 is coming out. So um, we did movie day last year and we booked out a whole theater and we paid for 40 people to come to a theater. So all of our kitty families got invited to the Moana movie. So um, at the AMC theaters, 40 seats cost you about $400 to rent the whole theater out. And we gave gift cards for people to go down and get um, 
uh, food. I don't like that. It didn't work well. I'm going to add on the, the popcorn and juice package this time. It was just too much going on because if you got three to, three to four kids each and it's one parent, that's a lot of people to manage and get up the steps and all the things. And if the food is delivered, it just made it more better. It just made it more better. But they absolutely. And instead of delivering the cookies, we had the um, kits there ready for the kids. So as they went out the door, they took their kits with them. So I didn't have to run around this year, last year. But for 400 bucks, that's not a bad deal. But if the kits are like uh, five or six dollars. So if you had that ready for the parents when they showed up, that would be really cool. So what are the kits, Lisa, after they leave? Um, it, it's our women. That were, so the food kits are popcorn, a juice, and a candy. Mm -hmm. The little kitty boxes that they give them at movie theaters, that I wanted to have already upstairs at the movie theater, the set, the room we're in, as opposed to the parents waiting in line with the gift card and all that. I didn't want that part. That was too much. So okay. it, 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 it was a little discombobulated. Now the kits are the cookie jars, the cookies already in a, in a can and, you know, Merry Christmas type of things. We did that when they walked out of the door and they had either a Santa hat or a stocking, a dollar, dollar at Target, Walmart, whatever. It's not mm. filling the stockings with stuff so they can have their own little things. Oh, I like it. <laughs> I like it. Any other ideas? Any other things you guys want to swap? No, I... You guys go all out. I, I I suck. I just do. I feel like it's so funny. I, I always when you're talking about baby gifts, um, like I I knew somebody last year, somebody was delivering a baby soon after the closing. So I gave him a gift at closing, you know, for the baby. Like I think it was a stroll I don't remember what it was, a stroller or something. And I'm thinking to myself, just now, why did I do it at closing? Why didn't I wait a little bit to do like I love you know, you're going past, mm -hmm. you know, years past. I mean, I just, I don't, I don't do that, which I, I obviously I should because I I'll send them, you know, something a couple times a year at, uh, you know, Christmas and a Merry Christmas, you know, holiday card. Sometimes I get a little bit worried because of the different religions. Um, you know, am I going to offend somebody if I drop off cookies and oops, you know, they're, don't celebrate Christmas or something along those lines. So, um, and then what I do is I put it out of my mind. I shouldn't do that, but I really should think about doing it anyway. If that makes sense. I, I just. Um, you can always do it just like a happy holidays, Lisa. Yeah. I, I you mean, have I mean, to put Merry Christmas. Those, just put happy those, holidays. Yeah, those go over. Yeah, well. happy holidays with the cookies. But I like the idea of what Lisa was saying is these are your Santa cookies. Um, I love I love it when you drop something off and it's a story you drop cookies off and they're, not that it's not a story but this is a story you know uh put this out for santa and um you know you start the kids their minds thinking and mm -hmm. i love the um who uh, was it mary ellen that was who's who was talking about the um, puzzles you know mary um, i like that too because that's a story yeah that was part lisa, of our you family. could do yeah. it lisa you could do it let me ask you this if do you have a to get you to brainstorm on this so you don't feel like you're invading on religion and worried about what people are going to think when you do it is there when you were little and you're growing up or with your family or whatever is there some kind of holiday cookies that you liked to make or that was always there that has a special memory for you because you could always do those kind of cookies. You put them in a box for happy holidays and say, hey, when I was growing up, this was always my favorite holiday cookie. And I wanted to share some with you. I just, I made these or I, I bought these or whatever you want to do and bring it back to like, this is something that I loved and I wanted to share it with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like that. Um, I think one of my hangups is it's a mindset and this is probably mm -hmm. a lot of information, but I am a hundred percent. Um, uh, I don't want to say a hundred percent, but my background is, is, is Jewish Judaism. And I was never allowed to celebrate Christmas in my house. Fast forward at 18. Um, I, that was my favorite, the, Right. And now I'm 56. There's a lot of information. I've had a Christmas tree in my house ever since, because that is it's uh, not that it, it I don't think 
it's I love the smell. I love the tradition of decorating it. I, I mean, there's always these d things out there. So the mindset is, is, oops, am I going to offend somebody? Because I would offend my father every year when I said, can we have a Christmas tree? Can we celebrate both holidays? And so when I had my, um, you know, I have one child, we would tell, we would do both. Because I think it's society today, it's just, it's, Christmas got so blown up, right? Um, and, and is it really a holiday that it's all about the gifts and the materialistic things? And But it's really not, if you really look into the religion, I think. Um, but everybody wants to celebrate it and um, do things around that. So that's where I kind of get that. I think it's a mindset that I think I'm going to offend somebody. Because there are people in my area that if I you know, say Merry Christmas. And, and here's their, here's their exact answer. I'm Jewish. I don't celebrate. Well, let's, 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 you let's know? back up. No, 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 no. I'm just saying to you. Yeah. Like Amy said, this is your story. Yeah. You're incorporating your story, your reason behind this being so cool to you. You're not, it's not even about the gifts. So you're saying to everybody, I love to put up a tree. You don't have to offend anybody by giving them um, a cute little tree you find at Michael's for a dollar. You, you know, you're just incorporating. This is something that I would love to, you know, there's, there's, what's that little berry thing that people do at the holidays? Is that oh, something? The, 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 oh yeah. You kiss underneath it. Mistletoe. The mistletoe, well, mistletoe but the, the berry decorations. Cause I'm oh, about the to holly, 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 like the holly berry. Holly, holly yes. that's fine. Yeah. I don't know. It's fine. And I'm about to pull out my containers. It's about to be a whole foolishness. But I know I have mine to do too. The fact of it is you're telling your story and your reason behind it. My reason behind reaching out and touching people after the process, because I will tell you as a first time home buyer, I literally wanted to throw up at the table. I had no idea that this was going to happen. I felt that every obstacle that had been thrown at us was keeping us from going to the closing table. We thought we had a closing date. We were going to settlement and they told us no. Then we had to find a new lender. The lender got it all straight. And we were like, no, this cannot be happening. This is going to, it's going to fail. Somebody's going to run in the room and literally snatch everything out of our hands and walk out and say, no, literally sweating. I was tap doing the knee tap thing. My husband was like, if you don't chill out in the staggering room, you about to catapult out of this chair. So for my experience, when I heard that people don't remember their real estate agent, that spoke to me because my team's low, my team's motto, motto is service beyond closing. Yeah. Service beyond closing. It's just, it's, we're going to be here. So however that feels to me and however I want you to feel in that process, that's why I keep showing up. That's why I show up with vendors. That's why I show up with landscapers. That's why I show up with stagers and clean house cleaners. I have these people on standby. So whatever it is that looks like to you, whatever that feel is that comes at the holidays and you want to share that feel with people, I don't think you would offend anybody by sharing what makes you so excited about the holiday. Yeah, I like that, the way you bring it up. Yeah, yeah, and if it's like, if it's it's the the card, if it's just, uh, you have to figure out what your love language is yeah. and, and just what you feel comfortable with doing. I have clients, I'll tell you, you know, with the, you're worried about offending the people. And I, I give, I'm always giving things to my clients. I'm stopping by there constantly. I write note cards. I write over 300 note cards a year birthdays, anniversaries, everything else on the birthdays, everybody's birthday. I don't care who you, I have all of my clients, kids birthdays. I've called them and said, Hey, when is it? That's you can Facebook stalk them and figure out when half of them are anyways. But I send every single kid of my clients for the last five plus years, they get a birthday card and I give them a $5 dairy queen gift card. If you can love on the kids, the parents are going to love you more. I constantly I get photos. Like I, I do the same thing for the parents. I send a birthday card and I put like a $2 scratch off in it. I rarely ever hear from the parents that, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I literally get photos texted me or videos of the child opening their birthday card. And they're so excited because they got a gift card. 
Like if you, they say, if you love on the children, it is way more than loving on an adult, on the adults. They just like, we're talking about the um, pets, sending the flowers for a lost pet. You love on the pets, you love on the kids, you've golden to the children, you've golden to the parents, but you have to do that. But I always drop stuff off. I had Easter. So I have a family that is, um, I just respected what they said. They didn't disappoint me. They, they, they didn't offend me. I didn't defend them, but they had, um, for Easter, I would drop off Easter baskets to the kids. I would, the families would get an Easter basket from me with all sorts of stuff. I had one family tell me, you know what, can you please don't drop them because I don't want my kids to think that we're very much, this is not about Easter and our Easter bunny. This is on the religious nature of the holiday. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so that that's what they told me. So I don't do it. They get stuff for me from other aspects and other days of the year and everything else. But I specifically remember, and I do not drop at that household for Easter. And I do the same thing on Christmas. I don't drop Christmas off at there either. When I go to Christmas, my client, my clients are all, I'm surprised they're not already asking when it's showing up, but um, I'm about to go grab my gratitude pumpkins out of my um, storage that I forgot that I have. So I have plastic pumpkins that I deliver to my clients and they write their gratitudes for them between now and Thanksgiving. And then at Thanksgiving, like the little kids write it once a day, you have to write on the pumpkin. You get, it's a white, I bought white, large, they're like 10 inch. You can get them on sale right about now. Um, and I give a marker and I drop off this huge pumpkin to the family and the families write daily on here, something they're grateful for. And then on th- the idea is on Thanksgiving, you read the pumpkin. Oh my God. I had one oh, family oh hold God. the pumpkin. I had one, like goosebumps. I love that. I had oh. one family hold onto the pumpkin and tell Thanksgiving because they have extended family that lives all over the place and they waited until Thanksgiving and then the whole family wrote on the pumpkin. And I have people that keep these. They write the year on them that I've given it to them. And they it's and then it's a decoration for the following so year. Like ceramic ones you can get like a home goods. It's plastic. They're just large plastic. I'll throw a picture okay. in our thing. And but what they're do you, like do you send a inch. note to to to, to yep. um, there's like a there's like a do. little flyer. And I put a usually I put a marker and I put this detailed card of, hey, it's a gratitude pumpkin. Here's what you should do. And then um at Michael's or Joanne Fabrics or something like that, you can any craft show, any craft store. Right now you can get their like 10 inch large plastic. I love that. Pumpkins. And then I deliver those. So, okay. yep, I do that. And then um, during the holidays, I put basket, I put things together, no matter what it is, even if it's their first, their purchase, and I'm going to drop them off a Christmas ornament. I have a elf costume that I will put on during the month of December. And that is what I deliver my gifts in. No, ma'am. Mm-mm. Jane Hewley does that for me. Jane Hewley yep. has been the Easter bunny at our Easter egg hunts. Now our um now our title person has jumped into it and she not only contributes the money to the Easter egg hunts, but she also dresses up as the Easter bunny. And she is like over the moon excited to be in this. She's like, I gotta remember not to talk. Like I gotta get into my full thing. And she puts this costume on and she is all over the place. Now with my Easter egg hunt, please understand, we have taken it from my front, my yard, because it used to be held in my yard. We have moved to the local elementary that we have an amazing partnership with that I hope to build on that in the next couple of weeks. So we have had our Easter egg hunts there. And we have had our shred events, our community shred events. So the truck can show up and the people can pull up in the parking lot. So that has become a thing for us. But the Easter egg hunt has been massively crazy. And we have reached out to our sponsors to share, um, to get funds for ice cream trucks, candy, giveaway baskets. We've done all kinds of things. We put cornhole out there. Look, Lord have mercy. Bless her. There's the Lisa. Here's okay. the elf. Lisa, Lisa, please look up. Um, Lisa, Lisa, oh my God, let me see that. I was writing down what I'm. I was writing down the the plastic pumpkin thing. 
Wait, let Jesus. me see it again. The elf. Sorry. In the it's on picture, my thing. It's on her screen. Do you have your oh do you have God. your screen on gallery or screen? You have it on gallery? Yeah, or wait, hold on. You? Yeah. Oh my but I, I just saw it. Oh my God. Aren't you cute? Yep. I love it. And literally every I had I did this one time and I walked in to drop off a gift and I didn't know that the family was actually holding their Christmas that day. Oh, I didn't know. I show up. All the grandkids are there and then grandma's like, come on in. Here's, yeah, they were like, let's take a photo. They're taking photos, the whole nine yards. But you know what? They refer me all the time because yeah. they remember like, they remember that those crazy little things that you do for them. But it, once again, it's back to not what you did. It's how you made them feel. Mm-hmm. And my, like, I do an Easter event too. Every single year I have an Easter bunny. They come and do photos. I have free photos with the Easter bunny. We do food. We do the, they each leave with a basket. I have families that come since their kids have been born. And they ask me every single year, are you going to do it this year? Because they want that photo with that Easter bunny for every single year. It is a small thing. It, it's just more of um, the lo- lo- logistics of getting it all figured out versus how much it's really going to cost you. Because if you reach out to your favorite title partner, your favorite lender, your favorite whatever insurance person or anybody, they're going to they're going to give you funds. They are dead set on being a part of the process. And go back to the school that I work with. Do I call my lender and my title person and say, hey, we're going to um, do breakfast for the teachers? Yes. Do they show up with me at Costco and help buy muffins and bananas and breakfast bars and everything we pack up? One, one place even gave us lunch bags with their logo on it. And we filled the lunch bags and all the teachers just picked up the lunch bags and walked out with their juices and their items and the things. And what we heard, once again, we're going back to being unreasonable with the hospitality. What we learned from the teachers was they had K, what are the machines called? Curix. They had Curix in each break room. They had no K cups. Wow. So we said, let's go get the K cups. Let's go get the coffee mugs. Let's go get the little creamers. Now you can make coffee at work. She said, I can't afford to do one teacher was saying, Oh, I can't get Starbucks every day, girl. I gotta be in here and I gotta figure out how to get my coffee. I said, We will solve this problem. And we left a cute little basket, courtesy of the Pender Group. Just wanted to make sure you can start your day off great. And do they remember us? And this is the ha-ha funny of it all. When you realize that it's not one thing, it's a multitude of things that we do that people recognize and come across. So do I do, I'm very focused in my own city, very focused in my own city. It's a very odd name, so not too many people type it a lot. One woman called me. She works at the school that we're always giving stuff to. She says to me, I keep seeing your name. In the past two weeks, I've seen your name. I don't know how many times. And I was like, okay, I don't know what's happening. What do you, what's going on? And she said, well, I'm not selling my house, baby. She said, but I want you to know if the inkling of the the thought comes across, I'm going to call you. She said, because not only did you show up on my son's YouTube page, He was watching something and I came in in between a break, one of my videos. She said, your business card is on my desk at work from when we had the teacher breakfast. I saw you do movie night with the kids and help the PTA raise raise money. Then I had just seen your name pop up again because you guys had the Easter egg hunt. She said, where are you not? And I was like, I I don't know, ma'am. And she said, do you live in this city? And I said, I do. Actually, I do. I live right by the grocery store. She says, oh my God. She said, you're just all over the place. So it was a multitude of things that were being done. So when we do the videos and we speak about our cities, we do the videos and we get very, once again, Yasmin, we're going very niche, going very niche. We're getting getting real deep with this thing because surface level has never paid off. I've, I've come to realize surface level never paid off, never paid off. It just has not clicked for me just trying to cover everybody and everything. They weren't for me. My people are the move up buyers that buy over $700,000 homes. They usually have children. They are self-employed or very high in the, in the federal government. Those are my people. Those are my people. And, and once I committed to it, they were coming out of the woodworks. And I was like, why does everybody have at least two kids? What is going on? Like, this is crazy. But it was, I asked for it. 
I was very intentional with the people I wanted to work with. And they were selling the four and five hundred thousand dollar homes that I could draw, I could get rid of like this. And I and I was making deals with the new construction buyers, builders to put them in homes and being able to have that confidence that I could sell that other home and get them in right on time. So I was I was solidifying relationships all across the board. So it was a matter of just drilling in and being very intentional about who my people are. Do I work with other people? Yeah, of course I do. I just don't talk about them. I, I love them. I love first time home buyers. I love seniors. And I love them all. But those are not my happy, happy, happy. Ooh, child. You, I got a good one. You know, that kind of, that kind of buyer. Mm -hmm. So once I got intentional and Mary Ellen can definitely tell you and knowing me, my price jumped. Um, my price point has jumped um, almost $200,000 on average. I'm in this high sixes and sevens right now where I said I wanted to be. This oh, just got intentional with it. And once again, the personal touches did not stop. Nothing about my business changed. I just got more focused in on it, what I wanted to do for my people. And once again, staying in touch and all the things still work, the personal notes, the little cute gift bags, because people don't think... And, and of course, with everything going on right now with the NAR settlement, buyers never thought we gave a crap about them anyway. We just dragged them around and just did stuff. When I show up with buyer bags with cute little things, and um, I don't even give them a whole ton of information because it's, sometimes it's just too much. I do give them I have a little bifold, home buying made simple. I put that in the little bag and the little coffees and my personalized coffee mugs. And I used to give tea. Tea used to be a thing like, hey, chill out. We got it. We're going to do this thing. And people love it. They're like, oh, you gave me a gift. Because, you know, we tell them everything and they forget it. Anyway. But Mary Ellen, I do like your Canva idea of putting everything down and shooting it over. Because that's something I also do to um, woo listing agents. Mm -hmm. Anytime I offer with a buyer, which I, I don't work with buyers that often, um, I send um, a Canva sheet and I think I've shared it with everybody in both groups of my offer presentation with my face on it. And it's a summarization of everything that's offered. And I've shared with all you guys, the phone calls that I get back from listing agents, they are wild. They are wild. They are not a part of the crystal world. They don't know about video text messaging. And they think this thing is next level like craziness. They're like, what was that? You were so on it. And I'm like, it was an offer, but I wanted to stand out. From my counterparts that are offering as well. And they may have more money. They parent, they people may have more than my people do, but it, it puts a nice spin on it. Even when I've lost offers, I've still heard back from the listing agent. I've still Lisa, heard back. Lisa, could I ask you a question? What did you say? What did you just say that you sent to the listing agent? Oh, I uh, sent an offer sheet. It's in a it's in Canva. I'll I'll oh, put it oh. put, I'll put it in um the groups. Um, okay. It's just Thanks. it's just a, a summarization of my offer, and I put it on top of my package when I send it over. So when people mm -hmm. see it, they're like, "Oh, everything right here. How many inspection mm -hmm. days? The type of loan we're going to use? How much we're going to put down in earnest money deposit? My lender's number is on there. And of course, I'm going to call my lender. Hey, I just sent that offer over. Get on the phone now. Call them. Sell it. Sell us. Because and then I'm going to follow up with a video text and say, "Hey, I don't know if you got my offer, but." We just dropped it in. These are the details. My lender's going to follow up with a phone call. If you need anything, don't hesitate to call me. This is just us. Yeah, you know, I'm not talking about the buyer at all. I'm just talking about me and my lender and, and how we, um, and my title person, how we're all in a relationship. We go together real bad. You, you should use us. <laughs> so it, it has really, really, really cemented um, people either picking our offer or being very impressed by us and offering us that backup spot if anything goes wrong. So, but I, I will, I'll definitely put that in the, um, in the chat, in the groups so you can see. It's just, it's a simple little form. It's a Canva form. I saw somebody do it and I was like, oh, I need that. I need that. Just, I mean, cause you can, you can definitely do the email the, in the email and say, oh, this is the summary and now attached to the offer. But that picture, you know, Introducing yourself has been a game changer. People are like, oh, what is that? A video text message? And Karen, Karen is not here, but baby Karen is the video text messaging yeah. queen. She kills at it. And it's just so impressive to people. And it's such an easy process and step to do. 
it's so it's so it's such a no-brainer. Um, Mary Ellen can definitely speak to the fact that we have people get on the call and be like, oh, it doesn't work. Well, you didn't do it. You didn't even and try. It does if you are consistent and don't overthink it. And and if you can send a text, you can do a video text. And that's where the birthdays, the anniversaries, hey, I'm just thinking about you. Hey, I was in your neighborhood. Send them out. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if in the event you had a past client slip through the cracks, okay, when they get your video text, oh my God, I was just thinking about you. It doesn't matter how long you know it's been. Just reach out to them. They love it. I mean, because I, I think people crave that personal touch these days. We've gotten so automated. I mean, when's the last time you tried to reach somebody on the phone oh, that was at a doctor's office? And it's how many awful. times do you have to press the button? People want that personal touch. No matter what you think, don't overthink it. Don't overthink yeah. it. So there's a lady in my area, and I'm going to incorporate this in the next year for 2025. We have a lot of people that relocate to our area, and our county is 72 miles long but only 20 miles across. So people are like, they come in like, I don't know where really, it, it could literally be an hour and a half from house to house. So she has incorporated a scavenger hunt of all the important points of interest in these areas. So when they come and they say, I wanna go here to here, she sends them to like the tax office, the school board, um, some of the major attractions, the nice beach parks. And she has them take a picture and send it to her. And she'll respond. And she said, with the buyers that aren't really sure about narrowing down an area, she does that and they get to know the area without her having to drive them. And it's been an interesting thing that she's done. So I'm going to start to incorporate that into my business coming up in 2025. And I've got my county separated into three sections. So when they call me and they're like, hey, I'm looking at this area here, like Cape Canaveral, Kennedy Space Center, um, Port Canaveral, where the cruise ships go out. And some of it overlaps, but... I thought it was a really good idea for somebody that's new to the area to really understand what our area is all about. I just thought it was a pretty cool idea. But Mary Ellen, does that not reach back to us being very hyper-local and being able to speak to what's going on in our areas? Because it does. I shared with, I think, I know I shared it with you when I came back from Miami, one of the agents at his open houses, he plays videos of his community videos. He plays them on a laptop during open houses speaking about the different parks and different things in the area that he's in. Because if you're very hyper-local and you're focused in on a certain area, you're going to mm -hmm. have that stuff already slated and ready to talk about. Um, right. If you ever look at my YouTube channel, um, there are a couple of videos on there that speak to where I live and other areas right around me. And I'm literally doing a Google map and just going, okay, so you can see the highway from here. This is how you get to, you get to downtown DC. This is where all the parks is. This is where the shopping is. And I'm just literally scouring over a map. Mm -hmm. It's not even anything amazing in my opinion, but it is factual information that people would probably want to know about, especially because my favorite thing to tell people is anybody can buy four bedrooms and two and a half baths. Why are you coming here? What mm -hmm. do you want from here? What do we have here that has brought you here to, to make this final decision? Because like I said, that house can be found anywhere. It's mm -hmm. about location at the end of the day. This is real estate, location, location, location. So what is it about this particular place? Because I did a video last summer about USDA homes and I was standing in a new construction community. I never walked in a home. I literally walked around the community part of it where the parks and the tennis courts and the, the grills and all the things were. And I stood in front of the house and a lady called me from Louisiana and she says, I, I bought a USDA home here. I need to buy a USDA home there. Where are you? Cause I'm coming there to work. And that's all, that was all the, that was what she got out of the phone, the, the video mm -hmm. that I knew USDA. Wow. So, it, you know, once again, just being very, very, let's dig down. Let's, let's get really in front of people and really hear what they're saying and what they need from us. And I just had a client. He, he sold his house. We're um, selling the fiance now wife's house in the next month. And they're under construction for a new home. They got married a couple of weeks ago. So did I say, send me your registry? I need to know what you got on there. Right. Because I'm 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 in I'm involved. 
-hmm. The funny of the story is when he first moved to the community, this this man said to me, so so what's up with the ladies? And I was like, well, how would I know that? Like, I'm like, you don't you don't date the ladies that live in the same community. You was like, what's wrong with you? It's like bringing sand to the beach. No, you can't have, I said, guess when she get mad at you, she gonna come bust your windows out your house because she know where you live. No, you can't be her neighbor and date. No, it's too much. Guess who he dates? She lives up right across in the next townhouse from him. That's who he marries. I died when he called me. He said, hey, Miss Lisa, I just want you to know I'm getting married. I'm like, what? To who? He's like my neighbor. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. So we sold his house this summer. We're getting ready to get her house geared up and their new house will be ready in a couple months. But once again, oh, and another personal touch thing, building from the ground up because I love new construction. Will I go stand on the dirt and be like, okay, day one, day 25. Yep. Day 68. We're getting closer and closer. The house has been framed. Okay. Have you been here this week? Let me give you a little quick update. It looks so gorgeous. I'm so excited. You know, I, I'll stand on some dirt in a heartbeat. Okay. That's funny. But I did have a client. One thing that was very, very personal to her. Um, she went and put a scripture in the dirt when they built her townhouse. Oh. I had to, I had to literally, I was in the back listening like, okay, what was that scripture? Da, 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 da. Then I called my mom, the deacon, and I said, mommy, Let's talk about this scripture. I need some more information. I need some, why would someone pick this scripture so I can come up with something very cool for her? Because that was very important to her, for her to go put the scripture in the dirt and call in the builder and say, hey, my client wants to do this thing. And they're like, no problem, come on. We do all kinds of things like this. You know, this is this is part of the business. And so it was like, once again, just taking the time to, you know, have I been with her for, maybe four years before she bought with me and she went through a couple of rentals. Mm -hmm. sure. Did we build her credit up from the 500s and get her in a brand new construction house? Sure did. But it's just a matter of just listening. Yep. Just listening. If Any other listen, ideas? Clients will tell you. They will tell you. What to do. They will. Yep. You know, what Any are other <laughs> the medicine's coming out <laughs> that's good though it is good <laughs> any other things any other ideas things to touch on that we we to talk about i just had a brainstorm mm -hmm. amy we could take your gratitude pumpkin idea mm. and sort of push it toward the end of the year and during the month during the last month, so during December, you give out something. I don't know what it what it would be to symbolize your year. And then every day during December, they write something on the item that what that happened that year that they were happy about, grateful for, that they loved. And then on New Year's Eve, they all read the, I don't know. Maybe it's a star, maybe it's a Yeah, they do that. Some I've seen some people do it with um a jar. You have like a gratitude jar and you put little pieces of paper in that or you give them the paper and then they write something on the paper, put it into the jar every day, and then at the end, then you would reopen it whenever and read all of them. Mm -hmm. And then it's more like is private a vision board come to life. What? So what? It feels like a vision board come to life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like what are the things that you never thought would happen and they happen? And now it's like, because when I look back at my vision board, I always get that that ooh, I put that down. I really wanted that thing. And it happened. So when I always go back and review my vision boards, I'm always like, I did that. Oh. So that's what that's the first thing it made me think of. Like, is this is this your vision board vision board come to life? Like, and I do love the still the, the gratitude and the gratefulness of the things because I don't think we celebrate. I think that's why I'm obsessed with the wins on Friday. Because in this industry, we would love to be 300 plus properties a year closers. Mm -hmm. We're not that, but mm -hmm. we do good. Um, so we don't have 300 opportunities to say, hey, I closed today. 
Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. What happened amazing in your day that or your week that really, really signify an amazing moment? So you keep pushing forward. So we right. keep, push, you know, we keep mm -hmm. the good energy and keep pushing forward. So I, I'm Kelly. You got me thinking. There is a um, Tony what Robbins that does it um, a way too. Is that they they do it um, in a journal? So or you can do it in your day planner, what, whatever you use that. And if you don't use, then get a notebook. Um, but every day, because at the end of the year, like you're saying, you don't really remember what all happened throughout the year. So they have a, either a page in their journal or a page in their, um, this one had a, like the very front page of their journal. They, every throughout the year, anything that was like an aha, or I did that, I accomplished that. That was a feel good moment for me they write it down. Here was the date and here's what it was. And then at the end of the year, they go back to that list and are, gra are grateful for all of these things that happened and they can remember them because they wrote them down. Because I think that's the biggest thing. We have all these wins that we do throughout the year, but we don't remember them. A blessing jar. A new year, a new year, new year. Yeah do a blessing jar mm -hmm. so take the gratitude pumpkin idea turn it into a blessing jar so let's go through and write down all of our blessings that have happened to us or ours this year mm -hmm. and then either on january 1 or on december 31 you go back yeah. and you read through them yeah, because I know people do kind of get to the end of the year and they're like, what did I do? I've been seeing a lot of people on social media. They will record themselves in a in one year. I am going to do this thing, this thing. Or I think I think if I remember correctly, one young lady, she went through a very hard breakup. And her her statement was she did not know what it was going to look like on the other side. So she recorded herself in that very sad state of all the things that were questionable and all the things that she, what did she do right, wrong, or indifferent. And then she recorded herself a year later on that same date. And she was like, girl, you're thriving. Girl, you did this. Girl, you did that. Girl, you did. And she was just like, so it was both tears. One was sorrow. One was tears of joy. Look how I over, overcame and look how I arrived at this, this thing. So it was the coolest thing to see someone to be able to go back and backtrack and find that moment where they were just at their, you know, just didn't think anything was possible. And now, just a year later, because as my granddaddy said, you got more time, you got money. Mm -hmm. That's his favorite thing to tell people. <laughs> you got time. But yeah, I just, I, I like that, Kelly. And I'm trying to think, I'm I'm trying to picture what it would look like. What what the item would look like. Just, just, a, just a jar. It can either yeah. be a plastic jar or a glass jar. And it just says blessings well, on Kelly, it. You're not helping me. I want to go to Home Goods. I know. I'm, I want to go to Home Goods. He's one of the I know. See, you're Home Goods. I'm Dollar Store. We're going to Dollar Tree, girl. Um, One thing, if you do go to Dollar Tree, which I learned the hard way, and I didn't realize this because um, I used to buy gift bags at the dollar store because you can get like three for a dollar. Yeah. My handles always break on them. Okay. Every single, I always have one or two in a package of three that they always, the handles always come apart. I don't have an answer. You said this is on gift bags? At gift bags, when I get them at the Dollar Tree, mm -hmm. my um, handles always, yes. always come apart. Yeah. I bought these from Amazon. I ordered them in that's, bulk. Yeah, that's why I don't buy them from, Yeah, I don't get mine from Dollar Tree anymore because I've had too many problems every single time I've bought them. And I, I put my, I my small those. gift items in this and I, I have tissue Did paper. Did Amazon come with the thank you on them? Yes. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's on both sides. Yeah. Because so, I did uh, my, um, my mom's birthday. But and I ordered golden. For my daughter's reception. 
and I order, um, I love the gift ideas. I, what I usually do is I order, um, some like, um, body self-care products on Etsy, um, from a site called my beloved skin and they do, um, stuff for the men and the women, but it's just, um, a wide array of, um, like made products with, you know, few ingredients. So you can get body but butters, um, sugar scrubs, salt scrubs, lotion, um, soaps, beard butter, um, body wash, um, and the, they range in the scents. Um, you can even get one, it's like a, a shea called nothing but the butter. Cause I said, well, my client, I say, he, he don't want to smell like anything, um, <laughs> military. So she was like, oh, I got something, but, um, I mean, they have a, she does one with like goat's milk and then they're decorative. Another one, it's got um like the beeswax in it. She does a lotion bar. What I, I love using that for traveling. I'm like, I don't have to worry about anything spilling. I just take the bar and I just rub it on me and I'm, I'm good to go. But mm -hmm. um, turmeric and honey, it's just a wide array of options that are out there. But then you got um, the little um, rosy smelling stuff and the peach smell and the cucumber melons and I like it. So I get stuff like that. And um, the one thing that I learned when I started buying them, whenever I had couples, the men would just, they would take everything. And I was just like, um, they were like, mm -mm, I, I, I like the self-care for me too. So um, I have to keep in mind, the men like the stuff just as much as the women do. And then the other part of the gift that I'll do is you know, while I'm working with my client, I'm trying to learn things about them. So then I have something else that's more personalized to them. So yeah. those parts of the gifts, um, it varies from one person to the next. Um, so I like the idea though of the cutting board because I used to give a serving board that was personalized. And the idea was like, you can hang it up. It can be decorative, but if you want to, you know, use it for like charcuterie or anything like that, you could do that. And I just hadn't found anyone, um, that wasn't charging like a hundred dollars for the the board. So I've been paying Lisa, like 40. I've been paying like 40. 40. See, that's that's reasonable. And that's kind of what I was getting before from the um company I was ordering them from, but I just kind of phased out of that. Um and I hadn't found and someone <clears throat> I had clients that bought a house and the agent um, on the listing side, she did one and it's like a, um, a board, but it was a carved picture of the house. And I was like, that is so cool. And she gave me the information, but I never moved on it because I said, well, that's great for people who've lived in their house for a long time. But if I've got somebody, you know, being that um, I, I technically I live in Blythewood, but you know, I'm a five minute ride and boom, I'm in Columbia. So we have Fort Jackson, we have Shaw Air Force Base. I'm like, if I'm dealing with military people, which I deal with a lot of, they may have been in their home for three years. They don't want no picture of a home <laughs> that they haven't had enough time in. So um, I, I would love to find out who you use for the the mats and the in the board. Yeah, I'll send you. I'll send you guys the links. Um, in the, I'll go my um, my phone and get it out. Um, the other thing that I found on Etsy, Mary Ellen knows these and knows I'm obsessed with them. The door bows. It's a girl. Um, she is in the UK. Her business is all tied. It's all tied up UK on Etsy. She has whatever color. My team logo is on here. I leave this on buyer doors and they love it. I, I absolutely have. want the contact information for that. Yeah. I door wrap all the time. It is huge. That is amazing. I love that. It's so easy. And I, and I sneak over before uh, mm -hmm. final walkthrough. I get there like 20 or 30 minutes early and I sneak over. So when they pull up, they're like, hey. and I, I absolutely want the information on that bowl. No, I'll definitely put it in. So um, I'll put the bows and the boards and the- Yeah, the, the boards, it's interesting. You said you paid about 40. Um, Yasmin, you're 100. The last one I paid was 76. And I just, I don't, you know, and it wasn't special. Like It was nice, right? But the 40 is doable. The 76, I just can't see doing mm -hmm. for every client. 
Yeah. I just had boards done, but I just have them put um, their smaller little, um, because I do sourdough, obviously you guys know that. So I put sourdough oh. in with it and I put a little board in there. And mm -hmm. I have a client who does the whole, um, who does it, but it was, and I don't put their name on it because I just had her do a bunch of boards. I wanted to see what they turned out. So it's just my logo. Yeah. And I feel like it was under 20 bucks a board. Yeah. Oh, I like that too. I mean, because if it's one, one, one thing going on the board, it'll definitely be cheaper. You know, right. Um, I'll yeah. definitely if you're going to get the whole, but I do love the fact that, I mean, they are going to definitely showcase it if you have their information on it. Okay, so what does yours look like again? Did you have one, one of your boards? I'll go grab one. Your little ones are the big ones. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. They're really, really good. Um, so with the bow, the first people, the first thing people ask me, agents always ask me is, do I put them on my listings? Sometimes I do. If I get to know the family and I don't feel like it'll be a problem with the, the buyer's agent and they won't act a fool about it, I will put that on the door. If I can show up there and when I'm taking the lockbox off and put it on there. So usually when they're in closing, I usually am putting this bow on the door. It has gotten overwhelming, amazing response. Mm -hmm. I have one clients off of it that were not initially my clients. So, but it's not intentional. It's just like, I just, well, the last client I did it for, I heard their story. They were um, a blended family. They were pregnant. They needed five bedrooms and they ended up moving in the, oh, that's so cute. I love that. That's cute. Oh, let me see. That's cute. Yeah, that's I like super, that. Yeah, it's super cute. And then you put the, the bread on there. So that's just, the bread that she bakes. Yum. So yeah. we heard that when they wanted to move, when they when they saw the house, they kept waiting for the house to make sure nobody grabbed the house. They were waiting to sell their house before they officially put an offer in on this house. So their house sold and we were still on the market and they came and they came running, blasting in the door like, we got to have it, we got to have it. Their parent, her parents lived in the neighborhood so like grandma and grandpa was right around the corner. I thought it was the cutest little story. They were the sweetest ever. I never met them in person. I just kept hearing things about them. But I said, I'm gonna leave them a, a boat. And they happened to live right across the street from my cousin who referred the listing to me in the first place. My cousin calls me. He said, if they don't take this damn bow off the door, he said, it's been months at this point. Why are they still holding on? I was like, I don't know. It's a nice, it's cute. I, I still have my bow. <laughs> I was like, don't I had somebody that. have it on for at least six months. Yeah. Wow. Like I would go to their house and the thing was on the door still. So. Hang it up there and they just don't let it go. And then I, and the, it's cute. Like the little, the older people, they're like, Do you, they'll come and they'll come to an event or they'll come and see me. I brought your bow. I didn't know if you wanted it back. No, I'm good. But yeah, they got it. Like they took it off. It's all like together still. So I could reuse it. They brought me all the like ribbon and the whole nine yards. Do you want this? I'm like, oh, well, thank you. And I put it to the side. And then I'm like, you know, it's a pain, more of a pain to tote that around when it's put all together. But yeah, they love it. They absolutely love those bows. Yeah, they love the bows. I tried to make it and I was like, okay, I can't buy a bow, evidently. And then I went on Etsy and I found this woman. And they're literally the car bows that people use at like weddings and gifts. It's the same thing. So she just going to ask you, like, what are the measurements of an American door? And I was like, well, what do your doors look like over in the UK? Because I was like, it's a door. Like, what, what is the problem? And I was like, do they have small doors? And I, I was on a quest to find out what the doors look like in the UK because it was just very interesting to me that that was the, the thing. But we figured it out. And I and she takes a, she probably takes a couple of weeks. So I order like 10 or 20 from her at a time just so I have them on, on standby, you know. And then I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm visualizing manifesting that I'm going to have that many closings and, and not need them. And, and be able I have to um, off of Amazon, you can get them and they're super, but the yard, yard stakes that say welcome home. And it's, uh, but I've gotten like, so I have two sets of them and I tell my clients, I will come and pick it up. You don't, don't worry about having to throw it away. If you get sick of seeing it, you know, you can take it down. Just let me know and I'll come and pick it up. But the kids love it too. You know, they pull up to the drive, to the road and here you've got this bow on the door and it says in big letters across their front yard, welcome home, you know? So the kids love that. 
I'm going to tell you what, I probably spend too much money. I'm probably going to real estate jail for all the foolishness that I do half the time. But because <laughs> that, who's that? What's that twenty five dollar thing? I don't know. The Not really. <laughs> who's that? That's silliness. Get out of here. Um, there is a my my friend once again going into my client database and using the people that have businesses around me. She has a yard card business, and she would go set up, spell the people's names out, welcome them home, all the things. And we did it a couple of times. I, I kind of fell off from it, but we did it a couple of times. And oh my God, with the pictures from that, this was before I got the bows. The pictures from that were crazy. People loved them. So they stayed for a whole day. And one of the things that I did, I heard it on a Buffini call. Once again, we got um, a welcome home card. And I went to probably about five or six of the neighbors. And I said, hey, I have a client. She's moving into this house. Young lady, really super sweet, nice young lady. You know, she'll be a joy to the community. I said, do you mind welcoming her and putting your house number under your name so she can know who her new neighbors are? And I gave Absolutely them. Absolutely love that. This was wow. COVID times. I, I gave that. them uh, Clorox wipes. I gave them hand sanitizer. Any little, I gave them little get, goodie bags, just saying thank you for you know doing that. Did I get phone calls for business? I did. I love that idea. So everybody signed a car welcoming, you know, the client to the neighborhood. And it was like, huh, that's pretty cool. So if you have the time and you have a night, and then that goes in the closing package when they're sitting there closing. And and then one thing I know, Mary Ellen knows, um, I turned uh, my uh, Google review link into a QR code and they could fill it out right there at closing when they open their card. When, when all the, as Krista says, when they all feel all good and warm and fuzzy. <laughs> yeah. Done that, but I have never put it in with the closing stuff. I've had it. Okay. I'm going to have to do that. I, I printed a, I printed a, a QR code on a bunch of stickers and I just put it at the bottom of the card, the welcome home card. And you, you could do that for QR card. code. And then I'll give you a call a later, week later. Say, hey, do you mind, you know, that Google review link? I'll send it to you again. Just let me know. Just couple reminders because sometimes people forget they get all excited and things are crazy and all that good stuff but I catch them when they feel good when they all get in you see happy off house stuff they ain't got the first mortgage payment <laughs> interest wow. is incredible so I put blessing jar I googled blessing jar gratitude jar and I found this I put it in the chat this image and what you could do is you could just take a mason jar cheaper cheaper than chips create a little sticker for the lid yeah print this oh. out tie it and then in the jar put a little thing of post-it notes oh that would be cute that just a little thing amazing. of post-it notes yeah and a pen oh, also let's put your idea with the picture that Yasmin put up make that a canva print it out and put your logo on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that the card and the little stickers and blessing jar or whatever it is. Oh. I think that is what we're going to do. That's going to be our end of the year gift to our clients, our sphere, our vendors. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to do that. Then, Whoever doesn't get the pumpkin is getting, I don't know how many pumpkins are in storage. Oh, you guys, this is so good. Let me tell y'all something. I am uh, the youngest in my family in real estate. Um, I have aunts that are, of course, older than me, and they're real estate agents, and they literally shit on me. They do. It's it's in secret. It's never to my face. It's always behind the doors, behind the scenes. So do you know all this foolishness that I do? You think I don't take it to my um family? I give them, I, I the, the agents, all my other aunties, my mama, everybody gets all of this foolishness. They all get it. Because you I mean you ain't gotta like what I do in this business, but I'm going to make sure that you understand that I am here. I I have solidified a space in this business and I am I am something to be taken note of. So please do not give me your little drama about oh she sees a baby in this business. She don't know what she's doing. See, I don't know what she's doing. I'll show you. I'll show you. So I'm petty. Just jealous. That's all it is. It's jealousy. Yeah, just petty with 
So I, I literally will deliver things to their houses and I ding dong ditch everybody. I don't, I don't really care to talk to people every day. So I'll, I'll ring your doorbell and go run and jump in my car and pull off. So they come to the door. Ding dong ditch. I love it. That's money a, talks. So Commissions. That I just Commissions is talk. A, um, <laughs> gratitude journals. I saw somebody put um, an idea and it was like little gratitude journals that you could give to clients. Um, I'm going to do, put that together too, with, um, a pen, but they're, they're about like two bucks a piece, but mm. they all kind of come with Dude, different like things like the on them and different yeah. things they could. Cause I feel like the jar will stay on the countertop in the kitchen and mm -hmm. everybody will walk past it and see it. And they'll remember that they're supposed to be, you know, celebrating these moments. So when the end of the year comes and that reflection comes through, it's going to be super cool. So I'm, I'm like, which jar do I get from Home Goods? <laughs> Just order mason jars off of the. Uh, that Kelly, you're missing the point. Who wants to go to Home Goods? The mason jar goods. is not at Home Goods. No, She's she going to Home Goods. Home goods. Aww. I have these. Let me put Aww. them on. Are those um, little notebooks? Yeah, and one if they so this one says smile, laugh, and be happy, choose happy. Um, they were on Amazon too. Um, let me see if I can find the link. Okay. Awesome. So well, Lisa, I look forward to seeing what jars you find at Home Goods. Yeah. So that oh, we can all find a Dollar Tree. If I go to Home Goods, I'll get for me, not you know, I'll be like, oh, the Dollar Tree, you can get like a me. whole case of them oh, for a buck. One for you. Exactly. Well, my mom. Well, my my daughter hit the Dollar Tree when she was getting married, and all the vases and all the jars that she juiced up, uh, did Pinterest love on. She juiced them all up, and she she just had jars everywhere. But I do want something. And I do think mason jars will do it with the with the twist lid, and and I want to be able to create that Canva label, um, so we can hack it up. You can edit it up, um, as needed for each of us to put our logos on there. But um. No, I'm going to Home Goods. I need to go to Home Goods anyway. It's my mother's birthday this weekend. And one of the things, one of the complaints that her oldest granddaughter has is she hates every towel in my mother's house. My mother will hold on to a towel for dear life and we're never sure why. So one of the things my daughter and I are combining to do is to buy her a butt ton of towels this weekend. So I have to go buy baskets and I'm going to roll the towels and put ribbons around them and make these baskets of towels. That's why I'm going to Home Goods. Like it. And I'm going to go find jars. <laughs> yes. Thank you, ladies. This has been absolutely super cool. Thank you um, for hosting. I'm so excited. Yeah. Like Thank you for book. doing this. This guy, he grabbed me. He grabbed my attention. Mm -hmm. He started talking about those personal, personal things that you do and how to elevate business. He said, because, well, who's to define what's the best restaurant? He was like, so what if my food is good? Everybody else's food could be good too. What are we doing in our businesses that are elevating us and increasing the experiences? And, and he, when he, when I was like, oh, why is this guy here? Then it dawned me. We have millions of people in the industry that are doing the same things we're doing. What are we doing to elevate our business for the people that we come across and really, really stand out? And that just really, and I mean, I literally was in the car crying last night, listening to the chapter. I was in chapter three or four last night. My daughter was like, what is happening? What are you doing? Why are you in here crying? I said, like, oh, he just told an amazing story. His mother had brain cancer. She had the surgeries. And as years went on, she progressively lost functions wow. to the point where she was a paraplegic. But her job every day oh. is to welcome him home. So she would tell her caregiver to bring her down to the bus stop every day. I was like, wow. <laughs> No, I can't do this. And she would want to be pushed close to the door of the room that he was practicing his guitar or drums with. And she would just be a part of every little moment in his life, even when she couldn't express herself, even when she couldn't reach out and hug him. And I'm like, oh, wow. The experiences, the moments of being intentional in this thing is just crazy to me. So I'm like, okay. You got my attention. These are the things. And, and then when we say, how do we go to the next level? How do we blow this thing up? How do we really reach more people? Not just being leveraging 
um, our resources and having VAs and all the things. What do we personally as, as the individual who spears this ship, whether we are team leads or not, what do we do individually to really remind people? So when you get those phone calls and they're like, no, I'm not calling anybody else. It was you. I had to call you every single time. It's like, yeah. Lisa, I love this. Uh, I, my niche is probate, and I always thought, well, I can't do too much because they're kind of sad. But at that point, they're not like sad because they've already accepted the fact that someone has passed on. So now they have to sell the real estate. So I shouldn't think about it like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't want to make them feel sad. I think I should rejoice with them because they have crossed a, a milestone, you know, because you have to keep moving forward. Yeah. So yeah, I, I love this. It's really yeah. helped me yeah. and I had to come late because I had an appointment. So it can, when you ever, when you have this recording. Yes, uh, I'll post it in the room. Mm -hmm. Oh, and okay. I'll put it in the early morning group so we can share well, with everybody. You are okay. so good at that stuff. I learn a lot. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, you just think about probate, divorce, um, the different areas that sometimes we're like, Ugh. Ugh. I don't want to touch that. Sometimes there is gold. Amy just had gold. She sold two houses and helped. She sold a house and helped buy two houses. So. Husband, yep, husband and wife were divorcing, and I've worked with them a few times. And so they called me when they were divorcing to sell their house. And then they um, both wanted to buy. And she asked me, um, you know, Josh wants to know if you'll help him too. And I said, well, absolutely. I'll help both of you. So, yeah. So that was three. And then I just last week met with a um, um, probate that we're going to be doing in January. And um, all the kids came to Minnesota because they're selling their brother's house. And I went there and um, never, you know, I talked about the extra little things and about the marketing that we learn about. And mm -hmm. um, they said, well, will you budge on your, on your fee? And I said, nope. I said, if you find somebody else that wants to do it for less, great, but make sure you ask them what they're going to do for their money and make sure you have them show you what they're going to do and make you show, show you the numbers so that, you know, and I got a call over the weekend and an email that said, we are going to be having you listed. And they actually came to Minnesota. The day that I met them was the day after they, um, the, the brother has passed away a couple months ago. And they actually met with me the day after they buried um, the brother. And so I was able to kind of, you know, I'm so sorry. You know, this is a tough road for you guys, especially this week. I would just wonder what would be that intentional thing that you could do in a probate situation? What would be that intentional thing you could show up with? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think the biggest thing with probate and, and dealing with any kind of time somebody passes away and you're selling their home depending on if it's vacant or if it has stuff in it, it's hard to get rid of somebody else's stuff. Yeah. So my, the last few that I've done, and I do a lot with, with attorneys, divorce attorneys, probate attorneys, and so forth is help them through that stage. So they don't know what to do, especially if they're from another area, who are the top charities that will come in and take the furniture, take the foods, take the clothing and mm -hmm. give them the, you know, the boxes. I think and set it up. the boxes mm -hmm. to pack things up is really important with a list, hey, by the way, these are some of the top charities that I help my my clients utilize because of this reason. This is a men's shelter. They have a retail store. They fix things up. They also house people. This one is the women's center. They do a lot with domestic violence. And so, and, and you could relate it to their loved one that just passed away. Do they have any specific charity that we could help benefit? Mm -hmm. Is there any type of religion? So when Lisa says, you know, you don't want to offend anybody, say, look, was there a specific religion that your, you know, loved one was a part of? Utilize that so they can do something in their memory and help mm -hmm. them get to the next stage of saying, okay, what can I do? So maybe they're only here for a week and we need to deal with some repairs that need to be done at the house. Just assure them, say, look, you guys do whatever you're going to do in a week and I'll take care of everything else. Mm -hmm. and extend did have this season. year too yeah where the um husband died and the wife was like I don't I she was like I don't want to be here and she, we helped her actually set everything up um 
and she took whatever belongings she wanted out of the house. We said, she's like, I just don't know what to do with everything. Um, I said, take whatever you want, take whatever you want from the house and I will deal with the rest. And so I put her together with an estate auctioneer Mm -hmm. and the estate auctioneer came and did everything. And then we also set um, up with a um, junk removal company that would come and get anything left in the house and they vacuumed and they picked up the house and they cleaned it. But then somebody was always there when these people were coming to look at the stuff or to pick up the stuff and she didn't have to deal with it. She just, and she's like, I don't want to go back in there. I'm like, I don't blame you. Mm-hmm. And so that's what the probate, they might just need that extra help of yeah. what do I do with all of this <laughs> stuff? You could do a trifold of everything that you just said, right? Mm -hmm. but then do a verbal conversation reminding them, hey, look, I know I left this with you. If you haven't had the opportunity to look at it, I will be more than happy to help facilitate it. Right, right. They did have questions on, they needed the front door because the wind had blown the door and that thing at the bottom had come apart. So they they wanted that fixed. So I was able to call a contractor or a young guy actually. Uh, he fixed it. Then they wanted something painted under the window. So he painted that. Um, and there was something else. There was three things. And then I called a, 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 a agent who also did staging. So that's what I called her for. And she thought she had a buyer for the house. But the buyer said, no, you know, this is what wasn't even on market. But we did sell it off market to the, the neighbor next door. His brother wanted to buy it. So, yeah, so it didn't work out. But yeah, mm-hmm. offering them services. And first I thought I was going to pay for them, but they paid for them, which is even better. So let me just stay in my lane and not, you know, trying to spend money that I don't have. So I just gave them the resource and I set up the appointment for them. Yeah, mm-hmm. just act as a concierge. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. In that sense, we do. I do that for my seniors who are downsizing is I just have wraparound services. I give them five hours with an organizer to help them get their purge started i um our our team assistant is a con- acts as a concierge so if they need mm-hmm. an estate sale if they need you know junk removal whatever it is she'll schedule the appointments um and then we put eyeballs on the house every week so if they've already moved into their assisted living or their memory care or whatever it is we put eyeballs on the house every week to make sure that the house is secure that there's not water running down the driveway that, you know, so that peace of mind sort of uh, service as as well. So yeah, if, if you can provide anybody sort of that complete package with the wraparound services as well and just make their life as easy as possible because with probate, with seniors, with divorce, this is a hard time. Mm-hmm. This is a hard time. So let's make their life as easy as we can, yes. knowing that the process is going to be hard regardless. Yeah. And acknowledge that. Say, look, this is going to suck. Yeah. Regardless, you know, you're you're missing grandma, you're leaving your home of 30 years, you're, you know, you're ending a marriage. This process is going to suck, but let's make it suck a little less. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um the group chat yeah what did you say to her nothing nothing what did you say to him nothing it's all in the group chat i only talk to you all in the group chat i don't talk to nobody outside of it yep then <laughs> tell her something you didn't tell me divorces it can they can be very hard but they're very lucrative if you work with them i mean like amy said i think the top deals i got out of one divorce was five deals because they got remarried. They had the boyfriend. Oh, she had another baby. Nope, the house is too small. <laughs> so you stay in front of them, but they appreciate it because um, you're there. You're helping them through a very difficult situation mm-hmm. and they'll remember it. And you stay in touch with them. Like Lisa said, you know, it's not done at the closing yeah. the continuation and they'll come back to you over and over. Over so, and over again. I got to go to Lisa. Thank you very, very much. No problem. Yes, no problem. I will put so the recording much. in the group so we can um, we can okay. go for go order okay. our red two jars. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to Home Goods today. Okay. Maybe not going anything I else outside of the house, but she's going to Home Goods.